Good morning, a very, very warm welcome to Church at Home once again. A very, very happy Christmas to you. It's great to have you uh, with us uh, this morning when I hope you're able to uh, to leave some of the presents just to, to one side for a moment to come and uh, worship the great gift from God that is Jesus Christ our Lord. So let's uh, begin our worship as we join together and sing Joy to the World. in our worship to bow down before you heavenly father whose love reaches down to us we offer you our praise this day lord and savior you're present in the world that you've made and we worship you we praise you that through the weaknesses and helplessnesses of a child your greatness and your power are clearly demonstrated to the world that the darkness of our hearts is illuminated by his light the ignorance of our minds is disturbed by his questioning and his wisdom that we praise you lord god that in jesus you came to recover what has gone wrong and to lead your people to peace to fellowship with you and to true fulfillment but we confess, most merciful Father, that we have sinned against heaven and before you. And so many times that we're not worthy to be called your children. So don't condemn us. We seek to re confess and repent and to be cleansed from our sins. We seek to admit to our weaknesses knowing that you will give us strength. To be honest, where we live in the darkness, but we seek to be opened to your light. We ask not for you to abandon us in our ignorance and self-satisfaction, but to transform our minds and our hearts and to lead us forward to find truth in you. So Father, help us to rekindle a passionate desire for your righteousness, that through that we may find meaning for our lives and our futures, and we may come and grow in love and grace of Jesus Christ. And we humbly ask this 
in his name. Amen. Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild. Jesus Christ, her little child. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all, and his shelter was a stable, and his cradle was a store. Holy child of Bethlehem, whose parents found no room in the inn. We pray for all of those who, who are homeless, who are finding difficulty to find safety uh, and security uh, and, and a place to call their own. Holy child of Bethlehem, born in a borrowed stable, we pray for those who are living in poverty, for those who are struggling with worries about their financial affairs or the future of their jobs or unemployment. Holy Child of Bethlehem, the rejected stranger, we pray for all who are lost, who are alone, who are isolated, all who cry 
for missing loved ones. And holy child of Bethlehem, whom Herod sought to kill, we pray for all of those who are in danger in this season. And we lift up before you our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. And holy child of Bethlehem, a refugee in Egypt, we pray for all who are far, far from home. And holy child of Bethlehem, in you the Eternal was pleased to dwell. Help us, we pray, to see the divine image in everyone we meet. So, Holy Child of Bethlehem, in your name we offer these prayers. Amen. Right, don't be looking. One, two. One, two, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, hopefully you're all in the waiting room. Um, the same as we practised, yeah? I'm going to go live because the Prime Minister's coming on and I want to see his announcement. So let's do this. Okay. Going live in three. On the first day of Christmas, Covid gave to me a mask with filters for me to breathe. On the second day of Christmas, Covid gave to me two surgical gloves and a mask with filters for me to breathe. On the third, third day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to me. me. Sorry, my body's in the waiting room. Three local lockdowns, two surgical gloves, and a mask with filter to breathe. On, On the, the fourth, fourth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to, to me. me. Eleven pipers, not sorry. yet, they're not. On the fourth, fourth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to me. me. Four separate guidelines. Three a mask with filters for me to breathe. On, On the, the fifth, fifth day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to me. Five claws, Jim. Four lockdowns to breathe. On, On the sixth day, day of Christmas, COVID, COVID gave, gave to me. Eleven pipers. No. Salad. On the sixth, sixth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to me. Caillou six. Five claws, gyms. Four separate guidelines. Three local lockdowns. Two surgical gloves. And a mask with filters for me to breathe. On the seventh day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave to me. me. Seven swans self-isolating. Six geese lost on track and tracing. Five claws, gyms. For me to breathe. On, On the, the eighth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave to me. me. Eleven pipers sanitising. <sighs> Why not? Let's roll with it. Wake up ten. Ten lords keep on shielding. Nine ladies social distancing. Eight, eight doors. Guidelines. Breathe. On, On the twelfth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave to me. me. Twelve drummers zooming, but their zoom legs are not working. Eleven pipers sanitising. Ten lords keep on shielding. My major symptoms displaying. Seven swans lost on track and tracing. Five separate gloves. And a mask with us for me to breathe. Merry Christmas. Good evening. No doubt this Christmas there'll be mess with bells on. A get together with your family, but perhaps not physically. Zooming into loved ones' rooms virtually. Crackers pulled, solely rocking Christmas hats digitally, with chestnuts roasting on a laptop screen. Maybe you're shielding your sadness. Maybe you're social distancing from any kind of gladness. Or confess you feel upset by racial collisions and divisions. 
Maybe there'll be an empty seat at the dinner table this Christmas. Amidst the hamper with soap swapped for sanitizer or woolly mitts switched for surgical gloves, may we remember that in the midst of the mess, there's a message of love. Forget 12 days, there's one day that changes the game for all history. Because on the very first day of Christmas, Jesus came for me and you. See, God came down to the front line to put in a perfect shift, to be the perfect gift, to reverse the rift. He faced the ultimate test to trace us back to him with his full flowing grace to sanitize our soul and make us whole. He came to offer us a vaccine that if we want it, we will never be socially distanced from God. The nation longed for deliverance, a leader to free them from tyranny. They knew the story well. God would send a mighty warrior, but they never expected a defenseless child. It was said the government would be upon his shoulders, but so would a criminal's cross. He would take the throne of his father David, but first he must pass through the veil of death. Each Christmas, we remember the unconventional arrival of this king, and we too know the story pretty well. We see the wise men on our Christmas cards tracing their westward journey. But these are Gentiles. They've come to worship a king for all people. Each year we sing of shepherds watching flocks by night, but these aren't exactly royalty. They remind us that this king lifts up the lowly, at Christmas, we celebrate a child's birth. But this infant is also the eternal king who spoke creation into existence. And he still speaks. Our first reading is from Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 to 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be all, for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, on whom his favour rests. Amen. If a wise man Standing 
The second reading is from Luke chapter 2, verse 14 to 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. You know, Christmas is a really, really busy time, which is a statement uh, of the obvious, really. And as we think about Christmas and getting ready for Christmas and, and all the things that we do uh, at Christmas, there are some of those big tasks, uh, aren't there? You know, the first one probably is, is the decorations. You know, spending all that time of dressing trees and dressing the house and maybe the inside uh, and the outside. Uh, and of course, all of those decorations uh, affect you. Uh, and those who visit your home under normal years, or those people who walk past or drive past your home. Uh, and then, of course, as far as what some of the other big activities are concerned, is food shopping, you know, uh, which even now in our limited Christmases has probably been quite a battle uh, and a struggle. Uh, and then, you know, whether you're having a quiet Christmas or whether there are one or two people able to come around, you know, there's all that time of preparing and serving but all of that effort goes into for you and to those that you will have in your home but the big one 
Uh, and the one that takes the largest amount of effort is present buying and present giving. You know, it not only covers those who are close to you, but also maybe for some of you, it's those people who are far away. Uh, and maybe for some of those presents that you buy for present for people who you will never, ever see during the year. But most of us maybe are at that point when you consider the gifts from people at work or clubs or family at church. You know, you spend an awful lot of time thinking and planning and buying those presents. And you spend a lot of time getting as you get closer to Christmas, actually distributing them and giving them away. And now we all agree, maybe, that it is more, still more blessed to give than to receive. And that would never be in question if the selection of our presence was not of such a difficult task. You know, if I'm honest, many men will remember all the too painfully all the efforts given to selecting gifts for our family, but in particular our fathers while we were younger and we were still living at home. You see, when people live in the same house, that one of the greatest temptations to overcome is this tendency to give each other that the gift that we hope will become community property. You know, I was once talking to, to a friend who said, you know, I bet my dad would love this tie. I'm sure he'd wear it often. Then he thought again and thought, mm, but if he doesn't, it would go awfully well with my new blazer. And then another year he said, I I'm sure my dad will enjoy this video of, of all the football highlights. Mm, yeah, I know. He'll probably watch it several times a week, but especially when I'm home so I can watch it too. Now, now ladies, you're given consistently far more credit with the sensitiv sensitivity uh, and the creativity in your gift buying. But one of two of you are probably guilty of the same sort of things. But I heard about uh, one person uh, at Christmas who confessed that for a long time he'd taken the shortcut with Christmas. Uh, and he said that uh, it had been clear that uh, while he'd enjoyed receiving well-chosen gifts, he was a shopper who invested no time whatsoever in the process. That apparently, one year, he gave everyone in his family and his friends staplers. Another year, he just walked into the store and bought flashlights for everyone. A dozen big, fancy flashlights. It didn't matter whether people needed them or, or wanted one or, or could afford to replace all the batteries that, that were required to operate them. You know, it, the story went that he admitted later that I didn't get away with this. People were very nice about the flashlights and pushed all the buttons and said they'd never seen anything like it. But he knew he'd failed. You see, there was a cost to Christmas, which wasn't money. It was the cost of thoughtfulness and time, and he knew that he had not paid the full true cost. There are those who prefer Christmas really simple, you know, and buy a dozen flashlights. I'm sure, you know, Grandma always wanted a flashlight that blinked yellow and red and shines forward and backwards and isn't too heavy to carry. But thoughtful men and women know that Christmas is much more, considerably more profound and much more satisfying. You see, the gifts we give, whether they be flashlights, ties, candle holders, mugs, are important symbols which express our love. But they are small tokens compared to the real generosity of this season. Christmas is ultimately about a God whose giving includes reaching out through an innocent baby to embrace a hurting and sin-stained world. In this season, one gift transcends all other gifts. It's a gift 
which shifts the focus from presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, to presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. God's gift of the Christ child is more significant, of more ultimate value than anything we are able to give. Through the Christ child, we have life, we know life, and we share life. Because of the Christ child, we can receive and give a new spirit, and we receive and give love. We can receive and give freedom. God's shown us the perfect example of giving. God has thought so much about about us and our plight and what we need, not what we want. You know, he almost says this, that I've seen every hurt in your life, but I've never stopped loving you. He says that you matter to me, that I love you more than you will ever know. I made you to love you and I've been waiting for you to love me back. God is saying, I want the rest of your life to be the best of your life. I'm with you and I'm for you, he's saying. I want to save you from your past and I want to save you for the purpose that I've made you. I want to save you by my grace. And he just says, if you'll let me do that, I will give you peace with me. And peace with other people. But you've got to open the door and receive my Christmas gift. You know, if you gave me a Christmas gift and I never opened it, you would be incredibly disappointed. And it would be a worthless gift because I don't receive the benefit of a gift I never open. Have you left an unopened gift under the tree? Jesus Christ is God's Christmas gift to you. Yet some of us have gone Christmas after Christmas and never opened the best gift of all. God's gift of salvation, of freedom and reconnection with him. Why even celebrate if you're not going to open the biggest and the best gift? It doesn't make sense to leave unwrapped the gift of your past forgiven, a purpose for living and a new relationship with God. Jesus Christ says to you that I can replace the frustration in your heart with peace. I can replace the guilt, resentment, shame and grudges and your sins with forgiveness. I can replace the worry and anxiety with confidence and faith. He says I can replace depression or despair with hope. I can replace emptiness with meaning and purpose and I can replace confusion with clarity. But he says, I'm not going to break down the door of your heart. You've got to invite me in. He says, it makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want me and you're ready to do as I say, the door is open. It doesn't matter what background you're from. And it's not about religion. God didn't send Jesus to give us religion. He sent him so you could have a personal relationship with him. Because it's all about relationship. God thought long and hard before in his special present. His presence. Are you going to leave it unopened? If you aren't and you want to open that gift and accept it into your heart and your life, let's pray. Dear God, 
I want to get to know you. I don't understand it all. But I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you're with me, even when I didn't recognise it. I thank you that you're for me. That you didn't send Jesus to condemn me, but to save me. I admit I never even realised I needed a saviour. But today I want to receive the Christmas gift of your son. I ask you to save me from my past, my regrets, my mistakes, my sins, my habits, my hurts and my hang-ups. I ask you to save me for your purpose. I want to know why you put me on this planet and I want to fulfil what you made me to do. I want to learn to love you and trust you and have a relationship with you. I need peace with you, God, and I need you to put your peace in my heart. I need you to take away the stress and fill me with your love and help me to be a peacemaker and help others find peace with you and each other. In your name we pray and we affirm that prayer together as we say Amen and accept the greatest gift that we could ever receive.
as we bring our joyful celebration and worship to a close. Let me just offer you a prayer and a blessing. May the joy of the angels, may the eagerness of the shepherds, may the perseverance of the wise men, may the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas season. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Born unto us this day a Saviour Gifted from heaven to a manger The hope of the world alive for all mankind All of the earth rejoice, it's Christmas time It's Christmas time It's Christmas time